hopefully this works. I haven't gotten any feedback from you guys, which is not good. I need to, uh, um, Rich is getting um, a lot of feedback from everybody, but your individual teachers are complaining that we're not hearing enough from you guys about how we're handling this. So if you guys could let us know what you like, what you don't like, any suggestions. Um, I'm gonna try and test out the Discord stuff or the, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, the, the Zoom meetings. I'm able to Zoom a little bit with a few people, but anything more than six and uh, my internet gets really laggy and crappy and you guys wouldn't really, it wouldn't be useful to you anyway. So um, today, we're going to try and do a brief lecture on all the common problems that I'm seeing in everybody's work and then I'm going to stop that video. I'll upload that one and then I'm going to upload a second video on how I want you guys to tackle um, uh, these long gestures or long studies, I should say. So on the list of common problems, um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people forgetting to check their feet positions and how we're supposed to do that to make sure things are planted. Now we've talked about um, the grid. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but the grid is very important. So when you guys start with your line of action, you know, so this is Buddy's head over here. You got a neck, body, you know, doing whatever with his arms. And now we're trying to place the feet, but we don't really know where to put them. Well, if you're looking at your pose and uh, you're trying to compare back to what you're, what you're seeing, we take that angle of how the foot is placed and you use this sharp angle and this sharp angle. I'm even gonna put them in red because I've seen people get this wrong. These two angles to help you find your perspective. So when you go to put down a grid, you should have something that matches what those feet are trying to do. And I'm seeing a lot of people forgetting these steps. And guys, these are very important because if, you're, if your character isn't grounded on um, a ground plane evenly, you know, foot to foot, heel to heel, um, then it doesn't really look like he's standing properly. So you need to have your grid on there very important and I'm seeing a lot of people miss that and then you're getting feet that look like they're just floating and that's not okay. Um, so make sure you're checking your feet, adding your grids. Um, I'm seeing a lot of characters where the um, you know body's looking pretty normal size and then you get down the pelvis and then the legs are like this long. Also not okay. So if you're if your pelvis ends here and your, your head starts here, the typical human is just a little bit longer than this length. So if I were to take that length, put it here, your feet are pretty much just going to be like right around there. This still looks a little inaccurate, but that's typically how, how we go about it. Um, anytime we've had models, I've pointed that out for the most part. Um, I know I've gone over that with the skeleton. So make, make a list, guys, of all of these problems I'm going to go through because chances are all of you are hitting at least one of them, which is totally fine. We're all growing. We're all learning. So that's, that's bound to happen. But so far, we've got grids for the feet. Um, super important. We're also now adding proportions, but specifically proportions, um, but specifically long legs, because that's the most common thing, and long abdomen and torso. So if this is your rib cage, neck and head, I'm seeing this area get way too long, and then it gets to the hips. This area doesn't have to, or shouldn't be very long. All that that area is, is to carry all our internal organs, which if you guys have any seen any medical chart, those are pretty much all clustered together. So we don't need a super long area here. Uh, and I know with some of you guys, when you do your your characters and, you, and you're just drawing for fun, you know, some proportions are more fun to elongate, but you have to remember, we're trying to draw what we're seeing here. And what we're seeing is human proportions. So we should try and keep it, you know, within some kind of relative scale. Um, so I'm gonna say proportions, long leg, 
legs oops, and torso. Um, next on that list would be no bean. Um, a lot of people, and I've gone over this in every class, a lot of people are missing the bean, guys. It's, uh, it's, it's, a big, it's a big part of what we're trying to teach you guys with gestures and long study. And if you guys um, are struggling to get it or you're finding it hard, email me. Um, reach out, you know, you, you can't physically say hi to me anymore, but you can still email me and still ask questions and still reach out if you're, if you're finding things troubling. And not even just with school, just in life. Like, you guys can hit up your teachers anytime. We're paid to be here to support you, to help you. So please, if you're struggling, reach out to me. Um, but if you guys remember correctly, you know, once you have the line of action and you got your head in there with your center lines, because those are very important, um, the bean is that connection between your rib cage, your little abdomen, and your your pelvis. So, you know, yeah. um, the cat's trying to get up on the on the chair, so I'm just gonna put her up there. She'll be happier anyway. Come on, go on. Okay, back to where we were. So, this bean shape, guys, right here, is super important. It's really good, and I'll see it in your work if you guys are trying to practice this more. But essentially, think of it as, well, they call it a bean because it does have that kidney shape to it. But uh, essentially, it's, it's equally as important to remember that it's just two shapes together that you kind of transition those lines to connect through. And then once you have that, then you can really start to build on how you bring out the legs and the arms and everything else. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to attach limbs to a shape like this. And that's why we really wanna try and get you guys using this as much as possible. So um, next on the list is the bean. Too much okay, so um, the bean I'm gonna super highlight because I need to see more people doing that. Um, think about it, guys. I'm collecting all your work, and this is what I'm gonna be reviewing whenever I go to mark your your best gestures. And if I'm not seeing many beans in there. It's gonna, it's gonna really reflect on everybody's work. That's a big important thing, and, and I, I know I haven't missed a class to talk about it. Um, so I need to see more people trying to put that in there. And if you're struggling with it, then take some time, get a fresh piece of paper, and draw a bunch of them on, a, on paper. You know, anybody who's ever gotten good at anything had to do that at one point or another. And if people are trying to take the lazy way out, then well, I'm sorry, but that's gonna reflect in your learning and your grades and, and everything that you're doing because you're not putting in the passion, the effort, and the drive it takes to get good at anything. So moving forward, um, I'm also seeing a um, lack of center lines, which are very important so we can know what the direction everything's going in. Apart from this guy here, and well, that guy, every head on here has center lines. Um, and that's the most important, especially from behind. You know, if, if this is the neck coming here, maybe the jaw drops down and I still wanna know what that direction is, you know? Now I know he's facing this way or, whoop, or you could have it that maybe he's facing out and off to the side. You know, depending on how you turn that ellipse really dictates what you're seeing. Same thing if you wanted him to be looking up, you know? And then you'd have less space on that neck because he's craning back, he's throwing his head back there. So it's very important that you guys add these center lines um, to really help sell what direction these eyes are going in. And for so many more reasons than that. Center lines are very important. Um, they really help dictate the pose, you know? 
And, and as we've talked about, guys, when you draw plumb lines, and, and when you have a, a gesture where part of their, most of their body weight is on one side versus the other, dropping these plumb lines and seeing what that, that weight scale is, you know, this one would be, you know, 80%, and this side has 20% of that pose. And if you break it down like that, you really start to mentally compartmentalize what you need to be focusing on as you're running through these gestures. So um, center lines are really important for that, plumb lines are really important for that, because um, all of those things will really help you bring everything else together, especially when you can divide parts of the body like that, because you can really start to see where you can fit that into other areas. Um, so please include your center lines. Especially on, you know, when you get that rib cage going. You know? Although that's a bad center line, but you guys get the idea. <laughs> um, and then, last but not least, and this one is the one I'm a little, probably the most frustrated by, because this is from day one, the thing that we've mentioned the absolute most. And I've already mentioned it a few times in this video alone. But guys, I'm seeing so many people not draw a line of action. It's the first step, the very first step. You shouldn't be doing anything else. And if I'm not seeing a line that dictates what that pose is, even if it's a straight up and down, you should be adding some kind of exaggeration. You should be trying to push it. And your line of action is the first step to doing that. So um, that one i'm really gonna be docking marks on if i'm seeing a lack of that when it comes down to finals um because that is something that i feel very strongly about and i need to see that from you guys um so um write this list down we've got grid proportions um in regards to the long legs and torso um and the bean lack of center lines and line of action. So this list is something that you guys should keep on the side of your desk to look at, to remind yourself while you're doing gestures. The same way I got you guys to make a list of all the key components that I was looking for. And I saw that it improved people's work. Those of you who actually put the list up. Um, so please guys, moving forward, Put this list on the side of your desk or wherever you work on your gestures and be mindful of it as you're moving forward. Okay, so that's the list of common problems. I'm gonna end the video here and um, we're gonna go over a uh, long study. All right, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>